Welcome to this week's episode of Hotter Than Health. My name is Eliza Gelman. So happy to have you here for today's interview. We have a fabulous guest. Her name is Palak Dave. And today we're going to be chatting about essentially what all of us are struggling with. And even if you don't think you're struggling with it, it's all around us. It is it is a subconscious yet very conscious epidemic. What are we talking about? It's really just the art of conversation and connection. And before you tune this out and think, oh, this has nothing to do with health and wellness, it does. We are talking all about intentional living, urging each other to prioritize real life experiences, getting away from the digital experiences that we live vicariously through. I was so fascinated when when I got pitched to speak about or speak to Palak about her her company and what she was doing. I immediately said yes. There was something inside of me that just wanted to have this conversation. And I think that if I want to have this conversation, that means hopefully some of you all will be interested in this as well. Maybe this is something you're you are dealing with with your children. And maybe there's an age gap, obviously there's an age gap, and you're having a tough time connecting. Or maybe you are in your 20s, 30s, 40s, moving to a new city and you're single and you want to find new things to do. Or maybe you simply are spending more time introspective and anxious and you're, you find yourself, I'm guilty of this, uh, going inward and really reclusing. This is a conversation that really does open up some of the some of the different aspects behind why connection is so important and in what ways we can develop connection. We had such a fun conversation, but a little bit about Palak before we get into it. Uh, Palak is, she actually embarked on a new journey after working with the Toronto International Film Festival and Indigo Books and Music. She was a senior level uh, position at uh, several different companies, but she embarked on a new journey in 2017 and she founded Emberia a sanctuary for women who want to elevate their life. Through Emberia, she inspires a shift away from digital distractions toward embracing the beauty of the present moment. With having hosted over 300 curated events, Palak champions intentional living, urging us to prioritize real life experiences and connections over digital noise. There's so much in this conversation that really did just feel like a friend you meet someone in a coffee shop, you say, hey, what do you do? And you expect them to just say, oh, I'm a CPA. Oh, I work in marketing. Oh, I do X, Y, Z. But it really did bring you right in to feel like a friendly conversation. And it touches on something that we all really could work on is our spending less time on off of screens and spending more time doing something that is not only aesthetically pleasing and beautiful, but that will lend itself to connections, friendships, or even just getting out of our own social bubble uh, with, with, different, with different opportunities. I'm so excited for this episode. I know you will love it as well. And I think it's super fitting for this time of year as if you're living in the US, this is just a time when like spring and summer, we're outside, we're socializing more. And if you are experiencing any of that social anxiety, we do discuss that on this podcast, on this episode specifically. Without further ado, I hope you all enjoy this wonderful and intro, <laughs> extrospective, <laughs> what is the word I'm looking for? I hope you enjoy this fabulous conversation between two friends with Palak Dave of Emberia. Enjoy. I can't wait for this conversation because this is something that on, not necessarily that I've been talking about on the podcast as much, but when you think about something so often, you feel like you're talking about it all the time. And this is one of those conversations where you're like, well, uh, we're all thinking it, but is anyone really talking about it? So today, you guys, we have Palak, Dave, and we are going to be talking all about the digital unit, not the digital universe. Why don't you do a better job of taking the words out of my mouth? Tell us what we're going to be talking about today. What lights you up? Where are we going? 
Thanks so much for having me on. I'm super excited about the chat. And we are kind of talking about the digital universe since we live in a digitally driven world. Um, so we're going to talk a lot today about how being in this digital world has really impacted our lives and how I feel like if we lean into minimizing our screen time a bit more and spending more time gathering and connecting with the people that we care about and living life in the present, how it can lead to a much more fulfilling life. So the work that I do and the mission behind my company and my why is all about getting people to live in the here and now. And I feel like it's more important now than ever. And it's so funny because if you boil it down, to one simple sentence is we just want to have a conversation we just yeah. want to have a conversation and share a meal <laughs> that's wow. exactly it honestly we could just end the podcast now that's totally yeah, great job guys yeah great um that's exactly what it comes down to and it's funny because people often ask a lot about how we do that and I'll get into some of that stuff but it can be that simple it can mm. be really just as humans are looking to connect Obviously, connecting in person has a different energy. I love that we can connect virtually and do things like this and have a conversation over, over technology, but there is a magic to in person and in real life that is unmatched. And I think that the more we lean into that, the more fulfilled we'll be. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in today's day and age, it's harder and harder to do that. And yes, I'm here for those conversations that not everyone is having, but yet everyone is feeling. So yes. And yeah. it's, it's so interesting because I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast are millennial, maybe a little Gen Z, but millennial, what is before millennial? That's such um, a millennial thing to say. I'm the worst. I don't know. Well, any, either way, there's- Is it Boomer? Is Boomer right up, like before millennial? Maybe. Okay. I thought it was like maybe Gen Y. Oh yeah, Gen Y then Boomer. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> wow. Read a book, girl. Uh, me. So- a lot of people that listen to this podcast are within a similar-ish demographic, but so many times I think about the generation before me, and even in my generation as I was growing up, we did have those more in-person in conversations, yes. conversations on the school bus, like the passing notes in class, yes. the very, very rudimentary types of communication, yeah. whereas now we're seeing it is, it's never been a part of the lifestyle of younger kids. And I say anywhere from 26 and younger. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's honestly, the world has changed so much at such a rapid speed that I think a lot of us haven't even caught up with the change and understanding the differences that have happened in such a short period of time, because mm -hmm. Technology is accelerating at such a quick rate, especially over the pandemic. It, you know, I think it it was so much quicker because of the time period that we were in and we were forced in it. But that's actually one of the reasons that I wrote my book, Beautiful Every Day. So it is all about an ode to that nostalgia and those moments because I am lucky enough that I actually did get to experience moments in my childhood that I had that time to pass notes and to write letters and to receive mail and to have those little like in-person things that you know, I don't think kids get to experience in the same way anymore. And there's just so much that came out of that, that I hang on to. And I think we need more of in the world. And so the book is actually a nod to all of it and has 28 different activities you can do to kind of get back into feeling more present and more nostalgic and infusing some of that beauty into your day-to-day -day life. And I like that. And I like that because I do want to talk about one or two of those little ways, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Take me back though. We jumped right into, oh my gosh, the world. We don't make eye contact. What are we going to do? Children know nothing. Adults know everything. <laughs> what was your, what was your childhood like? What was it like growing up in your family or in the surroundings that you were in that made this such a vital part of what you, of your teachings? Mm, that's such a great question. Actually, I haven't really been asked that, but it is such a important uh, part of my life that has really played into why I do what I do now. So growing up, like when I look back, it's like, I remember being the kid on the street that's playing where my parents were inside. I don't even think they needed to watch me, but I was like on the street. I had my school friends. I had my neighbors. We're all rollerblading. We're playing on the street. If it was snowing, I grew up in Toronto. So there's always a lot of snow. I remember just like laying there making snow angels and everyone would just be gathering. It felt like a community. And despite living in a big city like Toronto, 
it was like, if you equate it to a village, like a little community of people that I would see every day, I would go to school with those kids. I would know the kids' parents. I would run over to their house for a freezy or a popsicle and like say hi to the parents. And everyone would just have that connection. And it, I didn't need to text anyone before doing it. I didn't need to even call anyone. I would just be knocking on the door and telling my friends to come out and life just flowed. And I think there was a sense of ease that has been lost that yeah. we don't have now. And that sense of ease is what makes us as humans just feel more comfortable with our day-to-day -day lives. And I, I seek to get that ease back because I feel like that's when we truly feel like we're in flow with our own lives. And it's funny because a lot of people say this to me and they think they need to escape to nature now yes. to get that because that's where we feel the most grounded and close to who we are and to ourselves because we're back, you know, connected to ourselves, connected to the earth and things like that. Because we don't get those moments of just ease where we don't need to plan and we don't need to map it all out and have everything like figured out before we just like, act on our on our impulses. We're so extreme. We're so annoying. Why can't we just <laughs> on it? On, you're so right. Why can't I just eat lunch without my phone? I mean, those are the things yeah. that are are we can integrate into the day to day. Instead, let me tell you, tomorrow, my boyfriend and I, he's an airline pilot. Like he's out there. He's wow. in the in the like. Yeah. He's, he's doing his thing, but he's a runner. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go for this four hour hike tomorrow because I've been behind a screen all week and I haven't been moving. Whereas really, I could I could just go for a walk. You know, I don't have to yes. plan an hour and a half away to go for this four hour. Walk. It's all good, but. I see what you're saying. We are so extreme because we don't know how to have those moments during the day. Exactly. And what you said reminds me again of my, like you, my childhood. Children now will never know the fear of knocking on someone's door where you are scared of their parent. Yeah. You know, like they have one of the scary parents or the siblings, or you oh, have a crush gosh. on a sibling. Completely. Oh That's my gosh. Crazy. Yeah. They'll never have to face that. They face it in a digital realm, like in a world of, oh God, that person followed me or, oh, I'm going to that person's profile and they're hanging out with so-and-so. And so they are seeing things like on a different level, which I think is a whole other thing because they have access to something 24 seven, whereas yes. we an escape as kids, we were able to go to school if someone was getting bullied or someone, you know, someone experienced something, we could have a little escape from it. We can go home and feel a bit more protected, hopefully in our homes away from all of that. And now kids have access to it 24 seven, which I think comes with a lot, but you're right. You can infuse. It's the day-to-day -day things. We do become so extreme. We try and plan. And I think the reason we do that is because we're overcompensating. It's like, we have so much going on and then we think we need to do something extreme. So it's like, oh, we have to take that digital detox. We have to go on the four hour hike. Meanwhile, if you're taking like a half an hour walk at lunch every day, if you can, those little things add up to a beautiful life. And that's like, that's exactly what I try and tell people is that it doesn't have to be the big things. It can also be the day-to-day -day moments, not even like large planned events. It could just be moments. Well, you're talking to a very extreme person who likes to do the the big planned out things. And I, yes, I'm one of I, those people. I am one of those people. So if I'm one of those people, I want to know, it, it's easy to preach. We, these are all things that you know, we know, like we, we yeah, know it, we know, we do, but what, what was the time in your life where you looked around and said, oh my gosh, I need to change something and I need to do it now. Did you have a, a big aha moment or was there just this trickle effect? Yeah, it comes over. It happened, I think throughout my life where I've had moments. I mean, the first thing that I could kind of get into that really affected my why behind this work was when I was 15 years old, my dad passed away suddenly. And so I really learned at a young age that life is obviously short. It's unpredictable. You don't know what can happen tomorrow. Um, mm, so that's so really, sorry. thank you. That really, uh, it really showed me, obviously I didn't know it at the time, but it affected so much of how I choose to live my life because he had so many grand plans for when he retired and traveling the world at that time. And, you know, he did so much for the family and we, we didn't, 
get to see him experience and enjoy all those things because it ended so short for him. So it was like, he never got that. So I really learned, I think from that subconsciously that I want to take advantage of my day to day um, and my life because it is short and I don't want to wait for retirement to then, you know, enjoy it all. So I try to infuse it in my day to day. So that's a big part of it. But the second thing is that I was working corporate jobs in Toronto for 10 years. I had a corporate career working for some really big companies. And um, at some point, I think as we all sort of reflect at some point in our life, or many of us reflect at some point in our life, if we're into any growth mindset, that we question what we're doing and we wonder why, and we wonder if this is really it, or is there more out there? And so I remember I was in the last corporate job that I was in and I thought I went to a workout class and I walked in and I remember leaving the class, not having talked to anybody in the class. And I thought like, what's happening to society? Why are we all going to this class? And no one's talking to each other. And we're all just like, checking our phone after the class is done and walking out. And I'm like, isn't the whole point of doing a class together to be able to do it in community and connect with Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And this is before the pandemic. So it's before everyone was like used to doing classes on Zoom and things like that. But I really wondered why that was becoming the norm in a big city. And when you're craving connection, as we all do as humans, I thought there had to be another way. And so I actually ended up leaving my corporate job. And that's how I started in Beria. It was all about just getting people to gather and connect through shared experiences because I didn't think they took the time to do it when they would go to these classes or activities. And so it started Mm. with a yoga and brunch pop-up event that I did where we all like did a yoga class, but it was followed by a beautiful communal brunch and we all hung out and talked. And that first year I had planned to do like five pop-up events and I ended up doing 50 because people were so into the feeling of, oh, I'm craving connection. And so it just grew and snowballed from there. And that was really the validation I needed that we are all human at the end of the day. We all want to connect. We all want to have those conversations, but we're not necessarily doing it. So I needed to provide those spaces for people to feel comfortable to do it again. Five to 50. I am so (laughs) impressed by you, Palette. I am so impressed by you. And also I hope that you're impressed by yourself. That's pretty Uh, gnarly. When I'm going to ask the question though, that initially came to my mind because I am such a skeptic. When you say I hosted a yoga and brunch, Mm -hmm. I feel like, of course I see it on Instagram. I'm such a hypocrite, but I feel like I see these events, types of things happening all the time. And the goal is to look like it's one of those events. Yes. It is, it is to take pictures and it's to look beautiful and to have all these things. So this is a two-part question. When you have these beautiful events, isn't there that <laughs> pressure to like document the whole time and make sure that you can remember these things moving forward? And also what specifically goes on at these events that is different compared to literally any pop-up event true I'm, I'm this is what this is what I want to know I'm these are s- such great questions because they're so relevant in today's day and age because obviously when I started the company six years ago influencer events weren't as big of a thing I actually ended up doing some because I, I would get hired for doing influencer and media events and it is such a good point that you bring up I talk about this all the time I actually just put up a post on this the other day where People do go to events these days and it is aesthetic and it is beautiful and you do want to document every second. And that is completely not the point of the event. And I think that this is so important when you're curating an event and as an event host and something I take really seriously, I do think that is what differentiates my events because I do care about the beauty of them. And I love an aesthetic just like anyone else. Um, They're gorgeous. You guys have to look on Instagram at her events. They're wildly beautiful. Thank you. And I do really care about every single detail, but I also am very much about the actual experience and the feeling that it leaves you with more so than the way that it looks. So Mm. have some beautiful florals at the event and it will look gorgeous and everyone will want to take pictures, but I'm more concerned with all the touch points in the event. How do I make you feel when you walk in? How are you feeling? Do you feel connected to the people in the room? Am I making you feel like you play a role and have a purpose at that event? When you leave the event, how do I, how do I leave you? Do I leave you with a gift bag? But 
actually more than that? Do I leave you with like a hug because I feel like you just came into my space and I welcomed you in? There's so many parts um, that go into it. I've actually done Priya Parker's uh, course on the art of gathering. So I've like been sort of certified in that. And I understand the touch points. I actually have my own masterclass now on how to host events. And I teach people how to do it so that they're looking at those touch points and they're doing it in a way where it's not about the photos. And oftentimes I have people come in and I know everyone wants to document photos. So I'll say, we're going to take a minute, capture your content, take your photos. Cause I know you don't want to leave here without that, but then we're going to put our phones away and so I've had make it intentional. Totally intentional. That that word intention is weaved throughout my entire event from start to finish, and not the moment of the event. I actually would say that the start of the event is from the second the invitation is sent, or that someone sees an invite or a ticketing page. It's the feeling that they get from the moment that they understand you're hosting something. It's not oh I arrive at eight p.m. and this is how I feel. Leading up to that, there's so many emotions that go into it. Mm. If you're going to a an event and you don't know anyone, there's all these nerves. If you're going and you do know people, but you don't know if you're going to talk to them, there's all these nerves. Like there's so much that people feel. And so it is about the feeling. And I don't think enough people focus on that. I think there's obviously a ton of PR agencies now that uh, host influencer events. And what I like to say when I host events for brands is I want the event to be real and I want it to be a real uh, group of people and I want it to last longer than a 10 second reel. So that impression has nothing to do with just the reels. It's the fact that I could have, you know, a mom of two come to one of my events who has like a hundred followers, but she is going to tell all her friends about it because she left feeling amazing versus her putting up a reel and having people look at it for 10 seconds and move on, not even engaging with the brand because they don't feel connected because they weren't there. Like what's more impactful? I know you've heard the quote from Maya Angelou. Yeah. It's oh, it's yeah. not about, people might not remember what yeah. you said. They might not remember what you did, but they will remember the way you made them feel. Yes, exactly. So you are all about it. And, and I think that that is so beautiful that you are so self-aware, bringing that awareness into, you're not trying to change what day and age we're in. We're trying yeah. to change mindsets that we have become stuck in and something that comes to mind and this has happened to me more times than I can count all the way from like as soon as I got my driver's license not even when I from middle school to now and I'm 31 yeah less now but the situation where you get invited somewhere or there's a work happy hour or yeah. there is a any kind of event like you name the event whether you know people or not and there is this anxiety of yeah. either showing up alone or showing up and feeling that imposter syndrome or mm -hmm. showing up, not having any idea, like, you know what to expect, but you're already nervous. You get that social anxiety. You're planning out topics, you're whatever it is. What would you say to someone who, cause I'm assuming you throw these events all over the place, but what if someone can't access your events and they're going into an event of either their own or mm -hmm. something like this? What is your advice for that person who's like, okay, I'm not going to go unless I walk in with my friend. I'm yeah. not going to go. Like, how do I walk in alone? <laughs> Give yes, me that's actually a huge uh, a thing because a lot of people would come to even my events and they would say, oh, is it okay if I come on my own? And over time, I've like crafted my invites or my ticketing pages to make it so inclusive that you understand that we actually encourage that. I want you to come alone. But if you're not able to come to one of my events that I'm hosting, and even if you're hosting your own, or if you're an attendee at another event, then I would actually suggest if you don't know anybody, or if you, you have those nerves, I suggest reaching out to the host because if the host is able to connect you to even one other person for you to feel comfortable before you go in, then you can ask them and you can give them background on yourself. If it's a work-related thing, you can say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I have to offer. Wondering if there's anyone in the room that you'd recommend that I connect with because I look out for that and I would love oh. to. So I feel like that's a really good way of just making sure that you go in feeling like, the host knows who you are. They have you in mind. And really the host should be doing this on their own. But if they're not, I would not have thought about this because here's what happens is also the host is more so, and oh, hello, trigger, uh, like this is me projecting, yeah. but the host is thinking, how is everyone perceiving me as the host? Exactly. How is, how do, how do I look? How do me, my, me, my, yeah. and yeah. they're not, and, and, but there, everyone will feel so much more amazing about that event if they feel seen and heard. And absolutely. before I forget, I must recommend a book to you. It's which I'm sure you, maybe you've read, who knows, but it's called unreasonable hospitality. 
Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. It's on my list. And I've heard it's amazing. So I definitely will be reading that. But it, I, uh-huh. I'm sure it touches on a lot of this stuff because it's just like what you're, sorry, what you're talking about. Yeah, because it's not about you as the host. If you are a host of an event, it is about the people that you're bringing together and the intention back to that word intention. It's the intention around it and how you make people feel. And your job as the host is to make people understand why they're being invited to that space as a gather. Like it's not to just show off your skills or show that you're a great host or about your outfit, like all those things. Sure. You can, those can be the cherries on top after you've developed the foundation of the event and the purpose behind it. Like for me, a good event is when I know people leave saying, I understood exactly why I was there, exactly why the host invited me into the space. And I left feeling fulfilled and better than when I walked in. Like that is a good event, not one where I'm like, oh, I had like so many reshares for the pictures from the event. Like, that's great, but that's that's not my intention. I'm here to curate connection and community and make people feel great. And obviously the flowers and the backdrop and the music and all these things play a role. But if they even talk to one person that they connected with, because I happen to introduce them as the host and they made a new friend or they can collaborate on something together, then like that to me is a successful event. What is, I, I have some questions aside from this, but I do want to wrap this portion up by asking what has been your favorite testimonial of like friendship matchmaking that you have had or a wild conversation of two people that may never have met. What, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh my gosh. There's actually so many. It's my favorite thing. It's literally why I love doing the events because I get all these little tidbits after about oh, I met this person, but there was once um, a time where I had a class, two people were coming in. They both actually, I had been messaging with each of them. They bought tickets to an event and it was a workshop. It was a cooking class, I think. And they, they didn't know anyone. And I was like, oh, it's going to be great. You're going to meet people. And I remember two people that I had connected with, they hadn't met anyone before. So they were coming in alone. I ended up introducing them to each other. They went on to then go to other events, not only just mine, but other events in general, they became like besties, ended up hanging out all the time. They ended up collaborating on something for their businesses. And it was so beautiful because it was all from that little moment and seed where they're like, oh, I trusted my gut. And I came to something that, you know, I was a little nervous, but it ended up being amazing. And it leads to these like beautiful moments. And I I even remember once there was, um, a guy in like Europe and he was his girlfriend. He had a long distance relationship with a girl in Toronto and he was flying in and he's like, you know, she raves about your events. And then he bought her like a event as a surprise for Valentine's day. And they came together as a date. And it's just like these moments of connection that are created in these spaces are just so beautiful to witness. It just comes down to human connection. And it's so lovely to see. I love that. Speaking of fostering meaningful connections, I'm a woman in my thirties. Yeah. What would, how would you recommend going about creating adult friendships that are more than just surface level? Or oh. obviously people would say, oh, go to a workout class together, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody's talking. <laughs> yeah. And this has been like, I'm in my thirties as well. I can completely relate to this. And part of the reason I do the events is to foster that connection because I think it is People say it is hard to make friends as an adult. I do think that's true, but I also think that it's the energy that we're all individually showing up with that will change the collective energy. So we need to all play a role. We can't just be like, it's hard to make friends now and then like give up and assume that that is the ultimate truth. Exactly. Like, no, we can change it. So for me, for example, like I spend winters in Austin and I spend uh, the rest of the year in Toronto. So I do half and half. So I snowboard without being retired, which is great. I've been doing it for three years and it's that's amazing. awesome. Yeah, super fun. And I noticed a lot of things when I came to Austin and coming from a big city like Toronto, I noticed that when I'm going for a walk with my dog, people say hello and they stop and say hi and they chat and they smile and they say good morning and they say, how's your day? How y'all doing? Like they, it's that kind of Southern hospitality thing that, you know, we all hear about, but it exists. And it kind of opened my eyes a few years ago to oh my gosh, we are literally so busy looking down and being so absorbed in our own lives that we don't take the time to just do the basic things that, you know, back in the day before phones were a thing that people would do. And what does that mean? That means connecting to the people in your immediate communities and circles. So obviously it's lovely for all of us to have like global friendships. And I'm a big, I believe a lot in obviously making connections all over the world, but the little things that you can do in your day to day are just 
having the influence of like the circle around you. So that means your neighbors, your community, people just that you would encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. I have now in Austin, because I've talked to neighbors on a walk, made friends with people and gone out to dinners with them, been invited to their home. Like I think that the easiest way to make friends is to look up, not be on your phone when you go on walks, to smile at strangers and to strike up just a genuine conversation. Just be open. It's like an energy that you're giving out. And if you're open, you will attract that back. But if you're closed off and think that you'll never make friends as an adult, you're not going to have that come back to you. So I think that's my most simple tip that I would say. It's it's like that in dating too. You if you yeah. say, oh, there's no, there's no men here. There's no women here. There's no one for me here. And yeah. I'm like, well, then I guess you're right. <laughs> like, exactly. okay. well, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there are some places that are super saturated and yeah. there's, okay. there are, there are some truths to a lot of that, but there also, there can't be those truths plus a not so great mindset. Like <laughs> there's gotta be some type of one has to be bigger than the other. One has to outweigh the other. Completely. And I, and I do talk a lot about um, friendship being like dating, actually. So I hear this a lot when people move to new cities, they ask me, how do I make friends as an adult? And I'm like, it's a little bit like dating. You're going to have to maybe go on like 10 friend dates and you'll maybe jive with one of those 10. You're not going to become best friends with everybody. You're not going to want to hang out with everybody all the time, but one out of 10, you probably will find some sort of connection to be able to hang out with them again. And I also recommend um, inviting people into your home. I think that there's a lot of resistance around people wanting to host. They think it needs to be perfect, kind of like what you were talking about before. And honestly, if you have like a girlfriend over for, you know, it could be whatever, it could be wine and chips. If you want to do a cocktail, it could be a coffee, a tea, whatever you want. If you just invite them over for an hour, inviting someone into your home just gives them another layer of you and allowing them to let, let them in and let them see that part of you. Yes. And it just creates a deeper bond and connection than just, always like meeting at a coffee shop or going for a walk, which is great too. But I always believe that the home is like really reflective of people and it doesn't need to be perfect. It's okay. Yes. Our homes are messy. <laughs> yes. I completely agree. And I, I say that kind of hypocritically, I don't have friends over often, but also people are busy. We understand that even if you do have great friendships or you're not trying to cultivate like if you hang out once a month, I consider that a win in a lot of ways. It doesn't need yeah. to be every single day, but the home thing, I, I'm sure that some people are like, oh, I'm not inviting that person in. I barely know them. Well, obviously make sure that they not make sure that you don't, you feel safe around yeah, them. And then, safe. Like use your, <laughs> use your noggin a little bit. Yes. I wanted to chat a little bit about what are some practical ways that we can incorporate uh, offline experiences into our daily routines, especially ones that enhance our lives and not, not just the, Hey, get off your phone because that's, we, we anyone can say that. Yeah. Like what are some tangible examples that you have found really, really make it fun? Yeah. I think exactly. It's, we all know it. We all know. And yet for some reason, we can't stop because we're all, there's a form of addiction there that with the way that these things are designed. So I think that's, what's interesting is that we know, but we can't, we're not changing it. So it has to start with simple habits. And I know that we've all heard it, but I'll, I'll explain sort of my way of going about it that I find has had the most benefit. Um, once you've started your day and you're in your day to day, it's very hard to consciously look at your phone and be like, I'm not going to touch this thing. I'm just going to leave it to the side. So I often recommend the start and the end of the day are the two easiest times to be able to like disconnect from your phone because you're not immersed in it already. So for example, the start of the day, literally the first thing you should not do is roll out of bed and grab your phone. We all know that there's so much research behind that. And we just, we know it doesn't make us feel good. So knowing that you would have been sleeping those hours anyway, like just wake up, give yourself that time. I give myself actually like about an hour and a half before I even touch my phone. So I'm doing my workout, I'm meditating, I'm journaling, I'm doing all the things that I want to do, even having breakfast before, um, I get on there and there's nothing, if it's nothing urgent, I don't need to be looking at it at all. So I don't even bother until 
I start my day officially. And then at night. Wait, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt because also I just want to let everyone know that alarm clocks still exist. I use an alarm clock yes. every single morning, like battery powered, nothing crazy. Even if power goes out, love you, that. you don't need the phone right next to your face and your you bed, don't. like get you it don't. out. Yeah. And if you do need it in your room or you feel like you need it as your alarm clock, just don't put it right beside you. So you have to get up, turn it off and leave it there. Just turn okay. it off. You can yeah. press a little tap on it, turn off your alarm. That's what I yeah. do. And then get up and I leave it in my bedroom when I go to the bathroom, then to the, like to work out and all but, the things. Yeah. You yeah. don't necessarily need it. So that, and then even going for walks without it, like I believe in, unless you need it, obviously you feel more safe. Like if you for can, sure. going for a walk without your phone is like the best thing. Yeah. Just go for a walk, look up, look at nature, immerse yourself, allow yourself to be present. You like, obviously I love listening to podcasts. I love doing all this stuff, but I, you don't always have to be on all the time. So going for a walk, that's really lovely at meals. Like I'm really intentional about if you are having a meal with someone else, just connect with that person in front of you. Like that's the time that you have to be able to connect with them. So I actually find that, um, funny enough, when we gather with people and we are sharing a meal, like you said, at the very beginning of the podcast, that is when we are the least likely to look at our phones because we're immersed in the experience and we're having a great time. So knowing that it's like, lean into it, allow yourself to, you know, have those moments. I was on a podcast the other day and they said, um, you know, they were, and she was enjoying an experience and she's like, oh my God, I had so much fun that I forgot to take photos and I forgot to capture anything. I'm like, that's amazing. Isn't that the goal? That's that the goal. Wanna- such a good time that you're not even looking at your phone. So let yourself have more moments like that. And then of course at night, I think winding down is so important with our brains racing and we just, there's so much going on in the day as it is. We need to be able to give ourselves that time to like come down from that and to like Mm. prepare to have a better sleep. So just completely having a rule, it just has to be a non-negotiable. Once you start making things non-negotiables, they're more likely to happen. It's like, if you are vegetarian, you're not going to suddenly be like, oh, I just dabble in meat here and there. If you're a non-smoker, you're not going to say, yeah. oh, I still kind of smoke. Like you just make it a non-negotiable. Oh, I don't check my phone before bed. Okay. Like it's off at 9 PM and I just don't go on social media after that. Yeah. Don't make it. I say that I'm fully addicted, but I do the same thing. I'm like, I'm not going to be on my phone before bed. I don't bring it into the bedroom. I don't wake up with it, but it's, it's not always easy. I totally understand that, but there are this past weekend, I was out of town. When was the last time you invested in yourself? When was the last time you looked at your day-to-day routine and there was actually something that you enjoyed consuming and doing, but you knew that was going to be great for you and everyone around you? It is time to upgrade your morning routine with Organifi. Organifi, the superfood, incredible supplement company that I've been talking about for years, they are your answer to elevating your morning routine, your night routine, and your overall longevity. I've been taking the greens powder, the I've been loving the green apple flavor. I've been taking the organic greens powder for about four years now. I travel with it. We went on a trip a couple last week, forgot it, and talked about it every single day, only to each other because we didn't want to be annoying to the group. But I got to tell you, if I don't take it, I notice. And what I love about it is that the greens powder is not something that's going to send you running to the bathroom. It simply feels like you are doing something nourishing for yourself, for your gut, for your mind, and for your nervous system. One of the things that makes Organifi's green powder different from other brands is not only its fabulous taste, but it's also got uh, adaptogens in it. And adaptogens help to regulate the nervous system. So if you're someone who runs stressed and you want to incorporate something that is good for your overall wellness and state of mind, highly recommend the greens. You can get it for 20% off using code HTH or just use the code in the show notes for 20% off. This will get you 20% off of any of their products. I use their protein. I use their collagen. I use their magnesium and I every single day use their greens powder. Again, that is hotter HTH for 20% off. You can also go to Organifi.com backslash HTH. And don't forget, you can use that for any of their products. You can't go wrong. Out 
scuba diving. They are uh, like a big scuba diving family. Mm-hmm. And clearly when you're scuba diving, you're 190 feet underwater. You don't get text messages. You are yeah. literally focused on survival. I, yeah. I turn to my right. There's a, a shark that's, I mean, maybe, I mean, a, a nurse shark, which is like so happy. It's just a fish basically. And it was so mm-hmm. sweet, and beautiful. It was great. Nobody is more present than when they are surrounded by other people that don't have their phones either. Completely. It, it is such a game changer to be around groups that also don't have their phones on them. And I'm not saying that it's not, that they had them on the boat. Like, it's not like these people were completely nomadic, had no phones. Yeah. But I noticed that we would do a couple hours of diving in the morning. And then we would do an afternoon dive. So that was three hours out of the day where it's just no phone at all. Mm-hmm. And you begin to, that's your normal. Yeah. You begin to feel like when you do get to your phone, you're like, uh, I'm overwhelmed. You yes. get so overstimulated more easily. And I think it's the same when you stop eating super processed foods. And obviously we talk a lot about nutrition, but you eat a lot of processed foods and then you have a piece of broccoli and you're like, ugh no flavor Mm -hmm. or or on the other end of things you eat super clean there's no preservatives everything's like mildly seasoned with just herbs and then you have I don't know a cool ranch Dorito and you're like through a wall (laughs) yes and it's It's so true yeah I love that you had that experience because I think we need those experiences to be reminders to us to break out of the cycle because we are so in it and it is hard to notice when we are in it I mean when you're on like I mean I don't even have TikTok but if you have TikTok or if you're just on like the scroll of the videos and it's just endless it is so hard to know that that doesn't feel good until you like suddenly notice that it's an hour later and you put your phone down and you kind of like throw it aside and think like, what was I even doing? Why did I even do that? Like, I don't know anyone that's done like a scroll session and left feeling better than when they started. Like, that's just not a thing. So I, yeah. Yeah. If you feel better after a scroll session, it's because you were already having like a bomb day. It had nothing to do with the phone. It truly didn't. Exactly. Well, what's funny is let's say we're on a Zoom call. A lot of us work Zoom Zoom for work or we Zoom for podcasts or we watch YouTube for podcasts. What if we're watching a screen for, for so long? We're watching it for an hour, two hours, three hours a day. And then we're like, oh God, I need a break. So we grab our phones and we're looking at other screens. We're like, yeah. oh. and And then you really realize, oh my God, the world is beautiful. <laughs> like you actually look around and see the world differently. It's pretty wild. Yeah. And then we go from that to being like, oh, I'm tired at night. So I want to like disconnect. So I'm just going to like binge Netflix or whatever. And I'm just going to binge watch a few shows. I mean, uh, we're going from screen to screen to screen. And that's exactly why in the book, it's full of activities where I actually want people, I say, I would love for people to pick it up instead of their phone. And you can browse to any of the activities and be like, oh, I'm just going to try this and I'm going to try doing this. And it's your day to day. You don't need a bunch of things to make it happen. You don't, if you can't have the beautiful scuba diving experience in that day or not on vacation, then you just can infuse this in your Monday to Friday. And it's something that you can do for yourself. That'll leave you feeling really, really good and feeling present. So that's really part of the reason why I wrote the book. Well, I forgot to ask you this before we were recording. I'd love to do a giveaway. Let's get to that in a minute. But mm-hmm. if you'd be open to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one thing to also think ask is it's Thursday when this podcast comes out. People typically listen anywhere from 8, 9 a.m. to, I don't know, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. on their way home. What is something that we could do today, whether we're already leaving work or we are heading to work? What is if you could give one juicy takeaway example from the book. Oh, the book is like filled with things that just help you get off your phone. I mean, I would say, okay, if you're about to go to work, one of my favorite activities in the book is cafe at home. And it is about creating a little cafe for yourself at home. You don't need to use a ton of things. Like it can be very, very simple, but you kind of want to treat it like an immersive experience. Like if you go to a really good coffee shop that you love and you watch them pour the coffee or pour the tea and, or you're doing it yourself and you just love the feeling of that. I mean, I know a lot of people love a good coffee. So in the morning, 
mornings, why can't we create that for ourselves? So the book actually guides you through an entire experience on how you could do that from the music to the, like the feeling of pouring the coffee or tea to like what you should do when you're actually wanting to be present, how you can actually enjoy that moment and associate with it versus distracting yourself away from it. Because how quickly do we often, you know, pour a cup of coffee or tea and then it's, we go on about our day or we're just like grabbing our drink and on the way to work. And so it, that's like a simple way of creating such a luxurious experience at home using probably everything you already have in your kitchen. I love that so much. I'm a big proponent of just having just like romanticizing the coffee morning and totally it's like romanticize the whole book is romanticizing your life so it's Ugh. really about those beautiful moments where you feel like you don't want to escape your life but you want to like live beautifully in it and that's the whole point is that we're not we're not meant to be like oh i only want to live for the once a year vacation and i'm so excited yeah. about the those are great and of course those milestone moments are amazing but how can we bring that feeling into like the day to day moments where we don't want to have an escape all the time we do this. It's a very new thing, but we do a mastery Monday. It's a five minute Monday little drop episode. And this one this week is because we're Friday. It'll be Monday. We're in the future. We're in the past. No, we're in the future. <laughs> the past. <laughs> but the comparison is a video that I saw on you on Instagram or something. And it's two people. And for those who heard the episode just I'm repeating myself a little bit just fast forward with me there's a video of a, a dad and he's sitting on his phone his daughter who's maybe oh one goodness. walks in oh yeah. my god she walks in and he's just looking at his phone and she's just like do 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 pay attention to me dad and then she walks out of the room dad's still on the phone and then it says shows the same exact scenario where yes. he's off of his phone and he puts his phone down and he like embraces her and mm -hmm. it's just different scenarios with phone versus non-phone and the child's face is so much more engaged they are talking they are happy they're laughing and they you can see there's almost a shame yeah in the child when they aren't being looked at or observed yeah it's it's, it's it was honestly hard to watch it is hard to watch. And I've seen these video. I've seen a video like that. And I, it's so impactful. Like the emotion that it hits on for all of us is so real because we all have moments where we feel like this and we know that we don't want to go through our lives looking back and saying, well, did you spend like hundreds of hours consuming content that you didn't really care about? Like, is that the way that we want to spend our lives? I'm pretty sure the answer would be no for ma the majority of us. So yes, we need yes. to do something about it now. You can't really wait for those moments. We all know about those stories. Stories of, you know, at the end of someone's life, what do they say they wish they had done? And obviously there's a lot yeah. around spending time with friends and family, like doing more of what you love. Don't be, be, don't have to be apologetic and make the decisions that you yeah. want according to like the way you want to live your life. But I also think now what will come with that is like, don't waste your life away on these things that, you know, don't make you feel so good. Don't waste your life looking at someone else's who isn't looking at you. I'm sorry. Exactly. These, these are well, go watch a good movie. Like go yeah. watch someone gorgeous like Scarlett Johansson on a film. Like enjoy and invest in an hour of like real cinematography and then sure. and then in, you can talk about that. But granted, you're going to watch 400 videos a day of people that you don't know who they are. Granted, look, I, I do similar things and I need to. I, so um, we we all we're working do it. on it guys I put that quote up the other day and it said it actually did say um, how many hours of our lives are we spending watching other people live? And yes. I think it's so interesting that we are doing that from like watching them get ready to what they do. And I think there's places for inspiration and I think that's beautiful, but it's exactly what you said. I'm very intentional about what I actually watch. Like when it comes to shows and movies and things like that, I make that an experience. I will be like, oh, it's a Friday. Okay. I'd love to watch a really great movie. And like, I'm not just going to watch garbage and just, yeah. you know, have it be something that's on in the background anymore. I'm really trying to be very intentional with my time and how I spend it. And by the way, unfollow people that are negative. Unfollow people that make you want to scroll and see something else to make yourself feel better. <laughs> it, un, it, the world is too big to care if someone is going to be offended if you unfollow them on social media. Like just mute it. Self, it it's, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And once you unfollow that person, 999,000% of the time, you are not going to think about them again. You will forget. Exactly. Like the world it is big. It's like a big deal, but it's not a big deal. 
<laughs> like if that's your biggest problem, well done. Yeah. Truly fa- <laughs> fabulous job. I just want to say thank you so much for your time, Palak. You have such a contagious light and you have, you really do have a genuine essence of like just you have a really strong heart posture that is others focused and it's very clear in the way that you're selecting to live your life. I'd love to know, would you be open to doing, uh, giving away one or two books? Yeah, for sure. We can do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. The book is called beautiful every day and we will do a giveaway of two. All you have to do is follow both of us. I will put both of our Instagrams in the show notes, follow both Instagrams and comment on the most recent post on hotter than health podcast. So hotter than health podcast, leave a review, or I mean, leave a comment, any comment, just as long as it's positive and nice and fabulous. (laughs) And you'll be entered in to win one of the beautiful everyday books. That's really generous. Thank you. Even nope. though I called you out <laughs> without giving you much choice. So. That's okay. I'm glad I can't. I'm hoping that it will just impact many people and give them a chance to live their beautiful everydays all the, all the time. Well, I'm writing these directions down for myself. Well, thank you so much for your time. Go enjoy your Friday and... I am hoping that we'll have you on again and we can talk more about events. And if we're ever in Austin or if you're ever in Charlotte, North Carolina, then let me know. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. This was great chat. Bye. Have a good one.
before you tune away, make sure you enter the giveaway with Embiria as well as Palak Dave and her new book. We want to make sure that you are getting all of the goods that you can. All you have to do is follow Embiria, and that's spelled E M. B-I-R-I-A. Follow Emberia on social media as well as Hotter Than Health podcast. Let us know your favorite part about this episode in the comments of your most of the most recent post, and you will be entered in to win an, a copy of her book, Beautiful Every Day. Again, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Hotter Than Health. We love you, and we will see you on Monday.